Welcome to today's statistics tutorial. Today we're going to look at how to calculate the mean, median, and mode using a frequency distribution table. The three measures of the center of data are mean, median, and mode. The mean is the average data value amount. This is going to be the center value when you add up all of the value data. This is going to be the center. The median is the middle position data value. This is the data value that sits in the middle of your data. And the mode is the most frequent data value, or the value that repeats the most in your experiment. So let's look at a couple of, of examples to see how do we solve for each of these three measures of data. Let's look at the next problem. This one says find the mean, median, and mode for the sample using the frequency distribution table. So let's begin by look, solving for the mean. To solve for the mean, when we have a frequency table, we're going to take the sum of the x values times their frequency divided by the sum of the frequencies. So on the top, we're going to have 1 times 25 plus 3 times 15 plus 5 times 8 plus 10 times 10 plus 12 times 2. That's going to give me the sum of all of the x values. Then I'm going to sum the frequencies. That's going to be 25 plus 15 plus 8 plus 10 plus 2. When I sum all the frequencies, that's going to give me the total number of data in my sample size. So let's go ahead and plug this into our scientific calculator. So once again, we want to bracket the numerator and bracket the denominator so all those functions are included when I plug them into my calculator. I'm going to do the double brackets. 1 times 25 plus 3 times 15 plus 5 times 8 plus 10 times 10 plus 12 times 2. Then I'm going to double check that I have all of my values. Got 12 times 2, 10 times 10, 5 times 8, 3 times 15, and 1 times 25. So I have all of my numbers. I'm going to close my bracket, and then I'm going to divide by the sum of the frequencies. So I'm going to do my brackets. 25 plus 15 plus 8 plus 10 plus 2. Double check that I have all of my numbers written down correctly. Close my parentheses equals 3.9. And this is a sample. So that means my sample mean is going to equal 3.9. Now let's solve for the median. So to get the median position, we're going to take the sample size plus 1 divided by 2. Now our problem didn't give us the number of, of data in our sample, so we're going to need to calculate that by adding the frequencies all together. So 
So let's go ahead and put those in our calculator. That's going to be 25 plus 15 plus 8 plus 10 plus 2 equals 60. So we have 60 data points in our sample size. So now we can come up here and say 60 plus 1 divided by 2 equals 61 divided by 2 equals 30.5. So this is the location of our median, which is the middle data point. So now the next thing we need to do, since we don't have our data all written out for us, we can't just count it, we need to figure out which of these x values are occupying which positions so that we can find this 30.5 position and identify which data is associated with it. So we're going to start with our data value number 1 and we're going to start with 0 and add 1 for its lower boundary. Then we're going to add, take 0. And we're going to start with 0 because that 0, there's nothing there. Then we're going to add the frequency, which is 25, to get the upper boundary. So that means that the data value of 1 is occupying all of the positions between 1 and 25. Now we're going to do the same thing for the value of 3. I'm going to take this value where I stopped, which is the 25. I'm going to add 1 to get the lower boundary. And then I'm going to take that 25 again and add the frequency, which is 15. And that's going to give me my upper boundary. So 25 plus 15 is going to give me 40. And then I'm going to do the same with my 5. I'm going to take that 40 and add 1 to get my lower boundary. And then I'm going to take 40 and add it to the frequency of 8 to get my upper boundary, which will be 48. And then the next one is a 10. So I'm going to take my 41 and add 1 to get my lower boundary. And then take the 41 and add the frequency, which is 10, which is going to make that 51. And then I have my last value point. Oh, I see what I did wrong. I took the, on this last one, on 10, I used the lower boundary rather than the upper boundary. So you always want to use the last upper boundary. So let's try that again. So the upper boundary is a 48. We're going to add 1, that's going to equal 49. Then we're going to do the 48 again, and we're going to add the frequency of 10, that's going to give me 58. And then I'm going to do the last one, which is my 12. I'm going to take that upper boundary of 58, add 1 which is going to give me a 59 for my lower boundary. 
and then 58 at a frequency of 2, and that's going to give me 60. One of the ways that you can check that you've done this correctly is that your last position should equal the total number of your sample size. And that's where when I was doing, as you saw just a moment ago, I caught that I was making an error on this 10 that I had used the lower boundary rather than the upper boundary to, to move forward and that was making my data incorrect. So now I have the position spread or the data spread for each of those values. So now the next thing I want to do is I am looking for a location of 30.5. So I'm going to look in each of these and say where is 30.5 likely to be? And I can see it's going to be right there. The position of 30.5 is going to be somewhere in there between 26 and 40. So that tells me that 3 is going to be my median. So M is going to equal 3 for this frequency distribution for this particular sample. Okay, and then for the last item, I'm going to look at mode. And when you have a frequency table, the mode is super easy. We're just going to look at this row of frequencies and look at which one is the largest. And we can see the largest is at 25. So that tells me that my mode is going to equal 1. And that's it. That's how you solve for the mean, median, and bow mode for a sample using the frequency distribution table. Thanks for watching. Be sure to check out the links below for additional supports and resources. And be sure to like and subscribe to get the latest videos by CAS Academy. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you at the next tutorial.